Hello everyone and welcome back to another Live at Five. Today I am in the Cranbrook House garage and I thought that I would just do a short recap of a tour that I just did on our Facebook page and do a, a, a version for you here on Instagram. I've gotten lots of requests that some of you aren't on Facebook and since I'm here with a really great and super unique object, I thought I'd do a short version for you uh, uh, today. We are looking at a series of murals that were created uh, by James Scripps Booth, George and Ellen's oldest son, in 1914. James Scripps Booth was a artist, he was an inventor, a mechanic, a philosopher, he was born in Detroit in 1888, died in Connecticut in 1954, and he dropped out of high school or left high school in 10th grade to become a mechanic. And he would take apart the family car, a 1903 Winston, and rebuild it to learn how cars worked. And by 1908, he had invented a two-wheeled cycle car that he really perfected in 1913 into what he called the Bi Autogo. And it was only one was ever made. It's now at the Detroit Historical Society. Amazingly, it still works. And uh, it was restored a couple of years ago. And he did this series of paintings around the same time that he invented uh, the Bi Autogo. Now, this was made along with his uncle and a fellow, a, a distant family relation. The three of them ran the Scripps Booth Auto Company. And the Bi Autogo was painted on the wall of the garage in which it was invented. And so you see three happy people riding in this 37-inch wheel, wooden-wheeled car. It has two little wheels on the side that were um, sort of outrigger wheels used for turning corners. It was one of Detroit's first ever V8 engines. And so it was the first Detroit-made V8 engine in this sort of two-wheeled car. It had 45 horsepower uh, uh, and, and was really a very successful experiment as this sort of cabbed motorcycle. Now, the next set of murals that he did, and these join quite an extensive collection at Cranbrook of artwork by James Scripps held in Cranbrook Archives and Cranbrook Art Museum. He had a very graphic style of painting, which he learned as both a student at Detroit University School and the St. Luke's School for Boys in Pennsylvania, as well as at the Ecole de Beaux-Arts in Paris, where he studied with fellow Michigan native uh, Myron Barlow. Uh, and so these sets of murals show off different races. And so we have here the mechanic's viewpoint, where he's looking down the front of the car, racing two English cars, a Crossley and a Sunbeam, uh, and this wonderful sort of speed as you look down the road with the uh, uh, telephone wires on the side and then this sort of blur of wind and uh, sort of the energy of this car race. Now, that one is just entitled The Mechanic's Viewpoint, but the next two races are actually specified as to what the race is. This is the Grand Prix in France, Likely, uh, he's depicting one of the Grand Prix that he actually saw. So the Grand Prix of 1910, 11, or 12, the years that he was living in Paris. It was in um, Lyon, France. And we see uh, Nagant, which is a Belgian car, pulling away from the French-made Pugo here. And then this railway line racing across the top. And then a little house on the side. And then the last of the murals uh, is a the tourist trophy on the Isle of Man. And the Isle of Man in the English Channel is where the English race car community had to move their operations because of a 1903 uh, Motor Act in the United Kingdom that limited cars on uh, streets to 20 miles an hour. And so English races took place on the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man TT still takes place every year. 
Uh, it's one of the most dangerous race courses on the European circuit. And here we see two Belgian-made Minervas racing along. And Minervas are probably most famous uh, for being used in World War I as armored cars against the Germans. And so they were this sort of front-facing um, uh, on the forward lines of the trenches, going in and breaking the German line using these armored vehicles. It's a pretty unique set of murals that are down here in the garage of Cranbrook House. This is clearly a space that we still use. Uh, it's used by our landscape crews, our grounds crews, as well as our house and gardens uh, volunteers who help maintain all of the wonderful gardens around Cranbrook House. And so these are uh, viewed and appreciated every day by our staff and volunteers, but not too often seen by the public. So there's Cranbrook House up on the hill with the greenhouse down below and the sunken garden right behind it. I realized that I started this not at five o'clock and not on a Tuesday, but I'm trying to sort out exactly what the future of Live at Five is going to be. And so uh, I, uh, I know other museums are doing much shorter tours than what I have traditionally done. And I know that a lot of you are watching these after their lives. So I hope you enjoyed this quick view at a series of 1914 murals painted by Cranbrook's uh, uh, founder's oldest son, James Scripps Booth, and mounted here in oil on the wall of our still very much functioning Cranbrook House garage. If you want to learn more about James Edmund Scripps, or, or excuse me, James Scripps Booth, um, uh, or his grandfather, James Edmund Scripps. If you want to learn more about any of the booths, any of the scripts about the by Otago and about this legacy of automobile make, making, uh, as well as painting in the Booth family, uh, head over to center.cranbrook.edu. We have lots of resources on our archives tab and a, a, a series of other informative blog posts. If you ever have questions, you can always email us at center at cranbrook.edu or send us a message here on Instagram. If you want to watch a longer version of this same tour, head over to Cranbrook Center for Collections and Research on Facebook. Until next time, I'm Kevin Atkinson with the Center. See you sometime in the future for another Live at Five.